Dossier on Demetrius. A document now gathering dust in a silent room. Gregory Keane turns another page of The Dossier on Demetrius. Well, we'd set a trap for Peter Ridgway, but through the intervention of a friend of his, a chap called Digby Mitchell, he'd slipped through our fingers. We didn't worry much. You can't charge about London for long with the Metropolitan Police after you. And with Inspector Frain, catching Ridgway had become, you might say, a personal matter. Hedy Bergner was fairly safe. We had her guarded, as I believe I told you before. Oh, by the way, she found that job. She'd taken a job singing at the Red Feathers Club in Soho. But while all this had been going on in London, we'd had other irons in the fire. We had a general inquiry out for the man we knew as Demetrius, with all the European authorities that were uh, cooperative... And we were also finding out all we could about Carl Alexis Scammell, the chap they'd found dead under the Argartenstrasse rubble in Berlin. The investigation of Scammell bore fruit first, if you could call it fruit, that is. And I want you to remember, this whole affair began because AMC in Berlin thought the forged papers traffic was run from their headquarters, and they were sending Scammell to London in connection with... You can wait about if you like cuts. I shouldn't be with Colonel Fentress long. I'll give you a lift home. What kept you, Keen? I've been on the phone to Frain at the yard, sir. Sit down. Mm, thank you. Look here, would you like a trip to Berlin? <laughs> well, not particularly, thanks. Well, you're going. And you're offside of cuts, too, if you want him. Tonight? They're putting you on a BEA Viking in the morning. You have something on Scammel. Correct. We very definitely have something on Scammell. Uh, take this away with you and read it later on. Hmm? Very keen, I don't know. What the deuce are things coming to? Hmm. Summary of intelligence report leading to the implication of Carl Alexis Scammell in forged document traffic in Berlin. What the devil is this? The time he was murdered, the writing was on the wall. It looks very much as though being sent here to us to give us some special information was a risk they couldn't take. He was killed to keep him quiet. So he was handling the investigation in Berlin and running the traffic at the same time. <laughs> Perfect position to be in. Mm-hmm. Until things got too hot for him. He couldn't have been the top man, then? Obviously not. Taking a shot in the dark, I'd say the top man in the racket was, um, Demetrius. And why do you want me to go to Berlin? Look here. Scammell was killed at the moment when he was in possession of papers authorizing him to travel on that American plane. The man who disposed of him knew that. Knew the time of the plane's departure. Knew who else would be on the plane. Knew none of the other passengers could say, you're not Carl Scammell. Knew exactly what to do to disappear on his arrival at Norfolk. Now, that man must have had access to every detail of Scammell's movements, past, present, and future. So, Keen, what's the conclusion? I know. Scammell and whoever got him out of the way must have been very closely associated. Yes. You're going to Berlin to find out who of the people closest to Carl Scammell hasn't been seen since that plane left Templehof Aerodrome. And that man must be Demetrius. Because Demetrius is here. Unless... Unless, of course, Demetrius kept in the background in Berlin all the time. Then how could he have known enough about Scammell to take his place on that plane? Who could have supplied him with all that mass of information? Who could have got rid of Scammell for him at exactly the right moment, eh? Who? Well, I was thinking of Peter Ridgway. If he and Scammell were together at all, then... You can find out, can't you? Yes, you can find out, Keen. And you better. We don't know who Demetrius is or what he is. But one thing we do know, Keen. He's not here in London for nothing. And he must be caught. Peter? Are you awake, Peter? Uh, I just dozed off for a minute. What's the time? Ten past four. Here, give me your coat. Thanks. That's right. Now then, Sally, quickly. 
Tell me about Hedy Bergman and this job of hers at the Red Feathers Club. Yes. Well, I could hardly believe it at first, but it's true. Has she started there yet? Uh, did you see her? Yes, but she's not starting till tomorrow night. Tony Marsotti, he's an Italian or something, he runs the club. Well, he was in his office upstairs, and I had to run up with some cigarettes. She was there. Oh, she's beautiful, Peter. Never mind what she looks like. Just tell me. Well, Tony said, this is Miss Bergner, and introduced us, and said, would I look after her because she was our new entertainer? Do you know what time she'll be going and coming? No, but you can bet your life I'll find out for you. The other girl, the one who was uh, left last week, well, she used to sing her last song about two, and then she'd change and go. There's a little dressing room upstairs, just along the passage from Tony's office. We'll have to work this out. According to Digby Mitchell, they're guarding her flat, so it's no use trying to follow her home and see her there. We'll be asking for trouble. I could see her in the street, or contrive to jump in her cab or something like that. She could always scream and call a constable. Look, Sally, how well do you know this Red Feathers place? You mean the building it's in? Yes. Is there any back way into it? What are you going to do? Never mind, just tell me. Is there any way of getting into Hedy's dressing room without going through the club itself? Well, there's an outside stairway from a lane at the back that leads up to a little landing. But the door from the landing to the passage is always kept locked. No windows? Um, yes, there's one. Could you unlock it for me tomorrow night? I'd like to tackle Hedy in her dressing room after her last performance. You'll be taking an awful risk. I don't know. Why should I? Well, a lot of funny things go on at the Red Feathers Club. If you ask me, it's only a front for something else. Such as what? They say if you know your way around, Tony Marzotti can get anything for you. And he keeps two men there, gangsters they look like. They're supposed to be bouncers, but I'll bet they've got other jobs besides quietening down the occasional drunk. Such as keeping unwelcome visitors from looking too closely into Tony Mazzotti's office. Uh-uh. Oh, cheer up, Sally. I've done more than cope with the odd pair of bouncers in my time. But they're both bigger than you. Oh, what do you want me to do? Flex my muscles at you? No kidding, darling. I'm really tough. I'll cope. I have to. I have to get something out of Hedy Bergner. It's my only chance. But, Peter... Oh, you're so much in the dark. How do you know she'll tell you anything? She won't tell me anything in words. Not if she's connected with the murder of Hank Kodofsky. But I'll find out just the same. How can you? All I can see is you're going to run these risks for nothing. Oh, I do wish you'd go straight to Major Keene. Listen, Sally. They killed Godofsky. If I can make Hedy believe I'm dangerous to them, and she is mixed up in it, they'll try to kill me too, won't they? Yes, but... After I... I've seen Hedy tomorrow night, I'll arrange to meet her somewhere again. Why, if she even agrees to see me again, it'll look almost certain that she's involved somewhere or other. And if when we meet, something out of the uh, ordinary happens, then I'll know, won't I? Do you mean you're going to risk your life oh, to... Oh, don't worry, I won't be alone. They'll think I'm alone, but I won't be. Just get me into the Red Feathers Club tomorrow night. Just help me get face to face with Hedy Bergner, that's all. Well, why don't you get some sleep? Just look at the time, it's nearly morning. Come on. Off you go. Shut that window for heaven's sake, Darwell. Get five minutes peace and quiet. You know, they, they ought to ban German bands along with the Nazi party. <laughs> now, where was I, Keen? Oh, yes, yes, well, well... I'm sorry you've had this trip to Berlin for nothing. Now, there's all the dope on Scammell. You can see for yourself how he got away with this racket so long. As for Ridgeway, he couldn't possibly have had anything to do with Scammell or the document record either, because he wasn't even in Berlin. Hmm. Where was he? He was stationed at Hamburg. He only came to Berlin a couple of days before he flew home. But you tell me there's a chap who used to work with Scammell who's disappeared in the last few days. That's right, but if that poor inoffensive customer was your man, Demetrius, then I'm the King of Siam. <laughs> well, who was he and what was he? Oh, he was a German civilian called Otto Schmidt, uh, as ordinary as his name. We employed him here as a clerk of records. Hasn't been seen since... Um, when was it? The night... Uh, four days ago when he left here. About nine, I suppose. Oh, that fits in. Oh, but he was a married man with three kids that spoke no English. How the devil could he have impersonated Scammell on that plane? All right, let's forget it. Where exactly did you find Scammell's body? I can run you around to the actual spot, if you like. Might be an idea. 
I'll hop to it, Darvel. Bring the jeep round to the front. Right, well, here we are. There's no need to get out. I you see the remains of that wall? Yes. Well, Scammell's body was found at the base of it. Now, whether it was intended or not, we don't know. But after the body was dumped, about five tons of masonry collapsed on top of it. And it was only by pure luck that we found him at all. He was in a mess, I take it. Oh, yes, absolutely. We only knew it was Scammell by the uniform, the colour of the hair and the stuff on him. You know, cigarette case paper, watch on the wrist, uh, all that sort of thing. Yeah, a big bit fell on his head. So, we're no further forward. Ridgeway's in the clear, and the only man close to the scammer who's disappeared couldn't possibly have been the man on the plane. That's right. Haven't you any idea what happened to that chap, Schmidt? Not the foggiest, and actually we're too darn busy to worry about him. Plenty of odd Jerry's disappearing these days, you know. Didn't you mention something about a, a wife and three kids? Well, the wife's been pestering the, light, the life out of us. Right, left, and centre that her husband was murdered. Well, you don't want to have a look at her, do you? Sheer waste of time, old chap. I can assure you of that. Can you? Oh, absolutely. Well, I'd very much like to have a word with Fraulein Schmidt. And I'll tell you something, Griggs. I don't think it'll be a waste of time at all. Why did I say I wanted to see the German clerk's wife? Well, whatever made me do it, it was a good thing. Fräulein Schmidt forged us another link in the chain that finally led to Demetrius. 